Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome to another Cloud Path tutorial. Today, we're going to be talking about some very cool technology. This is a technology that will allow you to create intelligent chatbots and utilize them across various channels such as Slack, Skype, and Facebook Messenger. Yes, that's right, I'm talking about the Microsoft Bot Framework. So if that sounds good, stick around and let's get our feet wet by creating a simple chatbot and seeing what this thing's all about. All right, so before we jump into coding, let's go over some basic terminology and take a look at the bots ecosystem from a high level. First of all, we have the Microsoft Bot Framework. The Bot Framework is a collection of SDKs that we can use to build and develop bots. SDKs are available for Node.js, JavaScript, and also C Sharp. SDKs for Java and Python are also currently under development. Next, we have the Bot Framework Emulator. This gives us an easy way to visualize our bot, interact with it, and debug it. So the emulator is actually a program that we can download onto our computers, run, point to a specific bot that's under local development, and spin it up as if it were you know, embedded in any of the um, channels such as Slack or Skype or anything like that. So this is a great tool that we can use for local testing before we deploy our bot to Azure. Now, in addition to the SDK and the emulator, there are several different command line interface tools that allow us to interact with different libraries to augment our bots with additional intelligence and more advanced capabilities. Now, one of the most interesting of these is the LUIS, or Language Understanding Intelligence Service. And as we can see on their website, this service is described as a machine learning-based service to build natural language into apps, bots, and Internet of Things devices. Quickly create enterprise-ready custom models that continuously improve. So, in the context of using LUIS with a bot, the basic idea is that Lewis will uh, sort of parse or evaluate the user input and judge it based on possible intents. So it will return back to our code a list of possible intents with each intent being scored as more likely or less likely. Now with Lewis, the evaluation of the user's input is actually decoupled from the logic that dictates how to handle the results. Lewis hands its results back to our application, which then decides what to do with the results or how to respond back to the user. This model provides a lot of freedom and flexibility to developers who are working on the app who may have other factors to consider, such as the specific context in which the app and its users are operating. And finally, we have the Azure Bot Service. So the Bot Service is just kind of the overarching bot infrastructure in which everything operates. So once we develop our bot locally, we can upload it to Azure, and at that point, the bot service is what enables us to connect, deploy, and manage our bots all in one central location. All right, guys, so in this tutorial, we're going to build a simple echo bot that just basically outputs an echo of the user input to the console. We'll do this using the SDK version 4, which is the latest SDK as of today's date. Once our bot's created, we'll start it up and take it for a test drive using the bot emulator. There are a few things we'll need to get installed in our development environment first, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the first requirement here is to have Node.js installed on our system. So if you already have it, that's great. You can just uh, disregard this step. If not, let's just go ahead and Google Node.js. All right, and we can go directly to the download page. And depending on which operating system you're using, you want to choose the correct installer or binaries. I'm using Windows, so I'm going to click on the Windows installer. That's going to download to my system. And once that's downloaded, I'm going to run the installer. All right, and there it is. So I'm just going to go through the motions here and get this installed. This is going to install the latest version of Node and NPM. So I'll be all up to date here. And I'll just pause the video and come back once this is complete. All right, so my node install is now complete. The next thing I'm going to want to do is install Windows Build Tools, all right, which is needed to compile certain native packages. Now, this is only applicable if you're using a Windows system. If you're on a Mac or Linux or other, you can just disregard this step. So what I'm going to do is click on the Windows icon here. Actually, I'm just going to type in um, PowerShell. Okay, and I'm going to right-click and run as an administrator. Okay, 
Uh, now, there's an install command here from NPM, and I'll add this to the description of the video, so you guys can just copy and paste it. But this is what it looks like, so I'm going to go ahead and run that. And this will just take a few seconds to install. So I'll, again, stop the video here. All right, so the, the Windows Build Tools install is complete. I did run into one issue where I had an existing version of Python that <laughs> caused a conflict, apparently, with this script. So I had to go in and uninstall Python and then run this again. And now I do see one other sort of warning message here saying could not install Visual Studio, Studio Build Tools. And I'm assuming that's because I may have them already installed with my Visual Studio setup, so I really don't want to go and uninstall that again. So I think I'm just going to move forward from this point, and hopefully everything is where it needs to be. So hopefully you guys don't run into the same issue, but let's go ahead and proceed to the next step. All right, so I'm going to close this. I'm going to close my Node.js, and I'm just going to open a command prompt here. And let's make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see better. There we go. Okay, so the first thing we want to do here is create a folder for our bots. All right, so I'm going to switch over to C projects, and I'm going to create a new folder. I'm just going to call it bots. All right, and then I'm going to switch into that folder. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is install uh, Yeoman and the generator bot builder. Okay, so again, this, this command will be in the description of the video. Let's go ahead and get that installed. Then when this is done, we'll actually be able to use Generator Bot Builder to scaffold a bot Node.js project. All right, so I'm just going to pause the video until this is complete. All right, so install is complete, and now we can actually go ahead and create our test bot. So all we have to do is come down here and type in yo bot builder. Yo, bot builder. Hit enter, and this will go ahead and create our bot Node.js app. All right, so we're presented with a little dialogue here, similar to what you'd see when you do an npm init. So let's go ahead and give this guy a name. I'm going to say bot demo, or let's just say demo bot. Okay, we can just skip through this one. Yeah, I'm going to leave JavaScript selected. And we've got a couple of choices here in terms of um, what kind of template we want to use. So let's try EchoBot. It's the first choice here. And let's say yes. All right, so now it's created the basic folder structure for our bot app, and it's going to go ahead and run npm install and install all of our dependencies. So I'm just going to pause the video again and come back in a second when this is done. All right, and once this script is finished running, you should see a message like this saying your new bot is ready. So let's uh, tell you what, let's go over to our code editor and just take a look at what's been generated. So I'm here in Visual Studio, and here's that bots folder that I created earlier. Um, now the script has created a demo bot folder, which is essentially my bot Node.js application. All right, so this looks familiar. You know, if you've ever worked with Node.js before, we've got our Node modules, we've got our package JSON, and our entry point into the application, which in this case is our index.js. So if we just pop this open, we can see that the code is really well documented. You can kind of just read through this and see what's going on here. Um, I'll point out a few things. So we're using Restify here, which is similar to um, Express, if you've ever used that sort of a, a REST API framework. All right, we're pulling in various um, various objects from the bot core, okay, the core library, which uh, the bot uses for all of its interactions. And we're pulling in a bot configuration file here, okay, and what else? We're, we're just basically spinning up a server, a Node.js server. You've seen this kind of code before, um, and just sort of setting things up and initializing our application. So the next kind of interesting thing to look at is going to be in bot.js. And this is where sort of the shape of our bot interaction or conversation is defined. So if you look down here, we can see something called on turn and turn context. So this idea of a turn, this concept of a turn, 
um, you can kind of think of a normal human conversation. You know, I ask you a question, you give me an answer. You ask me a question, I give you an answer. I say something, you say something. We're sort of taking turns speaking in this conversation. And this translates to bot to user communication as well, since uh, this is a, you know, the, our, our communication is asynchronous in nature. Okay, I can say something and the bot will respond and we're taking turns, right? So only one um, sort of communication can happen at a time since, because of the asynchronous nature. And we can see, we can read a little bit more about this if we look at the documentation here, how bots work. And let's make this a little bit bigger here. So as you can see here, it says every interaction between the user and the bot generates an activity. Okay, so an activity can be something generated by the service, such as a channel join or a bot join, or it can be a bot to user interaction, such as a message. Okay, hi, you say hi. And uh, notice that these are all HTTP posts, so that's the mode of interaction between the bot and the user. We're using REST here. And if we go back to the code here, now this will kind of make a little bit more sense. So if turn context.activity.type, so we're saying if the activity is of type message, then send activity. And in this case, it's just a very simple bot. It's just echoing whatever the user enters, then the bot will echo back, you said, and turn context.activity.text. All right? So let's see what this looks like in action. What we can do now is go ahead and download and install the bot emulator and then point it to our new bot and take it for a little test drive. So let's go back to the browser. I'm just going to Google bot emulator. And let's see. Looking for the installer here, and I'll, I'll add a link, an exact link here, so you guys don't have to search through here like me. This looks like it right here for Windows, and you know they've got Linux and Mac as well. So I'm going to download this installer. All right, and once that's done downloading, I'm going to go ahead and pop it open here. All right, so the emulator's installed, and it opened up right away for me. So before I can actually open my bot, I need to um, start it up. So let's go back to our command line and let's do node index.js. Cannot find bots. Ah, okay. I need to go into my demo bot first. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. All right, so once this starts up, we can go back to the emulator and that looks like it's is that running? Yep, looked like, okay, so this is what I'm looking for right here. Restify listening on blah, 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 port 3978. So let's go back to our emulator and let's click on open bot. So we can do one of two things here. We can navigate to the .bot file in our project root, or we can copy and paste this URL in here, which is the default, uh, the default URL and path that our bot will be listening on. So once you've done either one of those things, go ahead and click on connect. And here we go. So our bot is up and running in the emulator. Um, this central area right here is just like the uh, the message panel where you you know interact with this thing. And over here, there's kind of a log where you can see the HTTP requests back and forth. So let's test this out. I'm going to type in hello, and our bot responds with "You said hello." So this is just you know a very simple echo. Uh, hey, you said hey. Tomato, you said tomato. Yeah, it doesn't know the song. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to add some more intelligence to this thing. All right, so there you have it. There is your basic chat bot. Um, and as you can see, we've just really scratched the surface of what's possible with, uh, with the bot framework. And, you know, we haven't even added any intelligence or any, you know, third-party libraries or oh, I should say any, uh, you know, additional libraries or functionality. Um, this is just the basic bare-bones chat bot. So... I think in uh, future videos, we'll look at, you know, how to deploy our chatbots to Azure, how to integrate with Lewis and maybe some other libraries, and how to really make this thing more interactive and more intelligent. All right, guys, so uh, thanks for joining this video, and uh, if you guys like this or my other content, 
please uh, consider subscribing to the Cloud Path channel. Would love to have you. And um, I will see you guys very soon in the next video. Take care now. Thank you.